Arachnoiditis is a term that throws people because, the, the, as the old joke goes, no, it's not a spider bite. It has nothing to do with spiders, except the arachnoid is a layer. It's a layer of the spinal covering and the brain covering. And if you do look at this layer under the microscope, it looks like a spider web. And so a century or so ago, it was named the arachnoid because under a microscope, even a crude microscope, it looked like a spider web. So that's where the name came from. But the arachnoid is the middle layer of the spinal canal covering or the brain covering, usually called a meninges. Now this middle layer, this arachnoid layer is filled with little nerves and blood vessels. So it gets inflamed easily. And once you inflame that, that's called arachnoiditis. Now, if the inflammation gets bad enough, it can glue itself to nerve roots that are hanging down in the spinal canal. And once you glue those nerve roots to the lining, that's called adhesive arachnoiditis. And that condition is tragic. That's when your nerves get impaired, the nerves that go to your legs, the nerves that go to your bladder and your bowel and your stomach, for example and that's when tragedy really sets in. Uh, nerves that get trapped in an adhesion, which is a scar really, are really impaired and very painful. And so it's a, it's a sad situation, but we can now diagnose it and we are developing treatments for it. Now the arachnoiditis uh, is easy to diagnose really. Uh, and in fact, there's a little five question questionnaire we presented here at the meetings, and these patients will have those things. Interestingly enough, the arachnoiditis patients will get some kind of strange things like burning of the feet. Their bladder won't work very well. They'll get blurred vision. But, they, but the bottom line is they have terrible back pain and they have weakness of their lower extremity. And the other real symptom is they can't sit or stand in one position very long. So this is the patient that's always laying on the floor, sitting up, standing down, just can't be in one position very long. And when you see a patient like that and they've also got severe pain, you pretty well have made the diagnosis right there. Now they can take blood tests for inflammation, which they should. The physical examination shows weakness of the legs. But the confirmation is done by what's called a contrast MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. It's this technology that has allowed us to move this disease from a rare status to very common and we now know that every community every medical practice has cases of arachnoiditis in it right now as we sit here i estimate that we've got at least one to two million people with it and it's a disease that every practitioner in the country is going to have to learn something about and they can and they should because we've got some treatments that really help The keys to successful treatment are first off, keep doing what we've been doing and that is get them some good pain treatment. Now pain treatment gets criticized because it, it is in effect symptomatic. We know that we can relieve your pain for four hours and then you gotta take your next dose of medication and no one likes that but that's what you have to do. Well we can't give that up obviously. A person's gotta be, have pain control in order to function and have a quality of life and be a productive citizen. But now you go beyond that and we've identified drugs that cut down the inflammation. Keep in mind that the word itis means inflammation. Arachnoiditis is really neuroinflammation. And there's a group of drugs that tends to help that. Uh, one of them is called, the most common one and the most effective is one, a drug called Ketorolac. Trade name is Toradol. We have to use some of the old cortical steroids. They're used at low dosages. Doctors don't like to use cortical steroids, but they're gonna have to in this case. And the most common drug that they use is methylprednisolone. And every doctor in America is familiar with what's called a Medrol dose pack. And that's what you use for the severe flares. And there are some other drugs that also help suppress the inflammation. And the new kid on the block is something called neurohormones. And we have, they're in studies now, but they're working very well. And these are growth hormone, human chorionic gonadotrophin. There's a drug called nandrolone, another one called pregnenolone. And so these drugs are now, they're available. And with a little teaching, with a workshop, any family doctor, any nurse practitioner can learn to use these compounds. In fact, they're much safer and easier to use than most of the things we prescribe in pain medicine.